We're sitting here using synthetic data generation. We're going to use reinforcement learning. We're going to practice it in our mind. We're going to have AI working with AI, training each other, just like student, teacher, debaters. All of that is going to increase the size of our model. It's going to increase the amount of con the amount of data that we have, and we're going to have to build even bigger GPUs. Hopper is fantastic. But we need bigger GPUs. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a very, very big GPU, Blackwell. Blackwell is not a chip. Blackwell is the name of a platform. Uh, people think we make GPUs, and we do, but GPUs don't look the way they used to, if you will, the heart of the Blackwell system. And this inside the company is not called Blackwell, it's just a number. And uh, this, this is Blackwell sitting next to, oh, this is the most advanced GPU in the world in production today. This is Hopper. This is Hopper. Hopper changed the world. This is Blackwell. 208 billion transistors. And so, so you could see you, there, there's a small line between two dyes. This is the first time two dyes have abutted like this together in such a way that the two dyes think it's one chip. There's 10 terabytes of data between it, 10 terabytes per second. These two sides of the Blackwell chip have no clue which side they're on. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. And so when we were told that Blackwell's ambitions were beyond the limits of physics, this is a fully functioning board. And I'll, I'll just be careful here. This right here is, I don't know, $10 billion. The second one's five. The way that computing is done in the past was retrieval. You would grab your phone, you would touch something, some signals go off, basically an email goes off to some storage somewhere. There's pre-recorded content. Somebody wrote a story or somebody made an image or somebody recorded a video. That record, pre-recorded content is then streamed back to the phone and recomposed in a way based on a recommender system to present the information to you. You know that in the future, the vast majority of that content will not be retrieved. And the reason for that is because that was pre-recorded by somebody who doesn't understand the context, which is the reason why we have to retrieve so much content. If you can be working with an AI that understands the context, who you are, for what reason you're fetching this information, and produces the information for you just the way you like it, the amount of energy we save, the amount of networking bandwidth we save, the amount of waste of time we save will be tremendous. The future is generative. We created a processor for the generative AI era. And one of the most important parts of it is content token generation. We call it, this format is FP4. That's a lot of computation. 5X, the token generation, 5X, the inference capability of Hopper seems like enough. But why stop there? The answer is it's not enough. And I'm gonna show you why. And so we would like to have a bigger GPU, even bigger than this one. And so we decided to scale it and notice, but first, let me just tell you how we've scaled. Over the course of the last eight years, we've increased computation by 1,000 times. Eight years, 1,000 times. Remember, back in the good old days of Moore's Law, it was 10x every five years, 100 times every 10 years. 100 times every 10 years at the, in the middle and the heydays of the PC revolution. 100 times every 10 years. In the last eight years, we've gone 1,000 times. We have two more years to go. And so that puts it in perspective. The rate at which we're advancing computing is insane. And it's still not fast enough, so we built another chip. We call it the NVLink switch. It's 50 billion transistors. It's almost the size of Hopper all by itself. This switch chip has four NVLinks in it, each 1.8 terabytes per second, and it has computation in it, as I mentioned. What is this chip for? If we were to build such a chip, we can have every single GPU talk to every other GPU at full speed at the same time. That's insane. This is one DGX. This is what a DGX looks like now. Remember, just six years ago, it was pretty heavy, but I was able to lift it. That DGX, by the way, was 170 teraflops. Now, this is the amazing thing. If we had to use optics, we would have had to use transceivers and retimers, and those transceivers and retimers alone would have cost 20,000 watts two kilowatts of just transceivers alone just to drive the NVLink spine. As a result, we did it completely for free over NVLink switch, and we were able to save the 20 kilowatts 
for computation. This entire rack is 120 kilowatts, so that 20 kilowatts makes a huge difference. It's liquid cooled. What goes in is 25 degrees C, about room temperature. What comes out is 45 degrees C, about your jacuzzi. So room temperature goes in, jacuzzi comes out, two liters per second. Our goal is to continuously drive down the cost and the energy. They're directly proportional to each other, cost and energy associated with the computing so that we can continue to expand and scale up the computation that we have to do to train the next generation models. I'm going to show you one super example of how AI and Omniverse are going to work together. The example I'm going to show you is kind of insane, but it's going to be very, very close to tomorrow. It's a robotics building. This robotics building is called a warehouse. Inside the robotics building are going to be some autonomous systems. Some of the autonomous systems are going to be called humans and some of the autonomous systems are going to be called forklifts. And these autonomous systems are going to interact with each other, of course, autonomously, and it's going to be overlooked upon by this warehouse to keep everybody out of harm's way. The warehouse is essentially an air traffic controller. And let's talk about the next wave of AI, robotics. The next generation of robotics will likely be a humanoid robotics. We now have the necessary technology to imagine generalized human robotics. The soul of NVIDIA. The intersection of computer graphics, physics, artificial intelligence. It all came to bear at this moment. The name of that project, General Robotics 003. Well, I think we have some special guests. Hey guys. So I understand you guys are powered by Jetson, a new industrial revolution. Every data center should be accelerated. A trillion dollars worth of installed data centers will become modernized over the next several years. Second, the computer of this revolution, the computer of this generation, generative AI, trillion parameters, this is what we announced to you today. This is Blackwell. And these robotic systems, whether they are humanoid, AMRs, self-driving cars, forklifts, manipulating arms, they will all need one thing. Giant stadiums, warehouses, factories. There can be factories that are robotic, manufacturing lines that are robotics, building cars that are robotics. These systems all need one thing. They need a platform, a digital platform, a digital twin platform, and we call that Omniverse, the operating system of the robotics world. Thank you. Thank you, have a great, have a great GTC. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.